Father, we come before you. We thank you for your word. The things that we see in this text are a lot more plausible and perhaps even beginning to be deployed around us. John was just trying to understand and take it in. We ask, Lord, that you would bless the word. We pray that you would help us to understand the time in which we are living, to have eyes to see, hearts to understand, that there might be an excitement in many ways in us, Lord, because we know the end from the beginning. And so thank you for revealing what will be coming so that we don't have to be afraid, but rather we might be ready with an answer for the reason that we have hope in what will appear to be on its way to coming a hopeless time. And so, Lord, may your church be strengthened. May we be encouraged. May the Holy Spirit fill every heart that's listening, whether, Lord, on the radio or at home or here or wherever it may be, Lord, may your word connect with them and encourage them, build them up, and call them closer to you. Bless this time, and we thank you for your word in Jesus' name. Amen. Mr. Frank, can I impose on you to close those back doors just in case we get some, some people rolling through for the outdoor service? Thank you, sir. Revelation chapter 13, John again writing to us, and I stood upon the sand of the sea. Again, <clears throat> Daniel 7 seems to be the Mediterranean. And I saw a beast rise up out of the sea, having again seven heads and ten horns. We'll learn in chapter 17, seven mountains on which this system will sit. Ten horns, again, as you've known by now, ten kings that will arise first. The Antichrist will arise after them and depose three of them. Ten horns, and upon his horns ten crowns, and upon the heads the names, a name of blasphemy. And the beast which I saw was like unto a leopard, Grecian Empire influence. His feet were as the feet of a bear, Medo-Persian Empire's influence. And his mouth was as the mouth of a lion, the Babylonian empire and its false religious systems influence. And the dragon, that is the devil from chapter 12, gave him his power and his seat or throne and his great authority. And I saw one of his heads as it were wounded to death and his deadly wound was healed and all the world wondered after the beast. And it would seem, it's our best guess, it'll be obvious when it's history, it would seem after making that peace agreement that brings peace to Israel and its neighbors for seven years, it would seem that after that, this attempt on the life of this individual occurs, but will be clear once it happens. And they worshiped the dragon, again, the devil from chapter 12, which gave power unto the beast, the Antichrist. And they worshiped the beast saying, who <clears throat> is like unto the beast? Who is able to make war with him? Remember, he deposes three of those kings and establishes his own power. He takes down these two prophets of the Lord from chapter 11 that nobody else could harm. And so the world is enamored with him. Who is able to make war with him? And there was given unto him a mouth speaking great things and blasphemies. And verse 5 makes it clear, thanks to Daniel 7 and Daniel 11, that is the middle of that seven-year period where he begins to proclaim himself to be God and to be above all that is worshipped, as we learned in 2 Thessalonians. There was given him a mouth speaking great things and blasphemies, and power was given unto him to continue 42 months, which you all now know is three and a half years or 1,260 days. And he opened his mouth in blasphemy against God to blaspheme his name, his character, the idea, his title, and his tabernacle, and them that dwell in heaven. And it was given unto him to make war with the, the word is hagios, saints, holy or set apart, ones who have been set apart by God in a relationship with him. Interesting, it doesn't say he made war with the church, but people who have come to faith, saints, and to overcome them. And power was given him over all kindreds and tongues and nations. And this is what's coming to the world. And all that dwell upon the earth, again, that title used for the unbeliever 11 times through this book, all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him, whose names are not written in the book of life of the lamb slain from the foundation of the world. That exhortation to get out of this deception and this time that is coming, you must be one who knows Christ in your heart. If any man has an ear, let him hear. 
He that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity. He that killeth with the sword must be killed with the sword. Here is the patience and the faith of the saints. Again, God will one day make these things right and bring a just judgment to what people have sown. And I beheld another beast, verse 11, coming up out of the earth, it seems to be from among men. And he had two horns like a lamb, and he spake as a dragon. Interesting, this false prophet as we identify him, used to deceive the world and bring them to the worship of the Antichrist, who brings them to the worship of Satan himself, this false prophet who we met last week in the text. And he exerciseth all the power of the first beast before him, and causes the earth and them, here's that term again, and them that dwell therein, or which dwell therein, to worship the first beast, whose dead beast, whose deadly wound was healed. Again, noting that attempt on his life. And he doeth great wonders, so that he maketh fire come down from heaven, talked about it last week, on the earth in the sight of men. And he deceiveth them that dwell on the earth, there's that title again of the unbelievers, by the means of those miracles which he had power to do in the sight of the beast, saying to them that dwell upon the earth, again that title for unbelievers, saying to them that dwell on the earth that they should make an image to the beast. This is the image Jesus warned of in Matthew 24, 15. When you see the abomination of desolation stand in the holy place, let the reader understand as spoken by Daniel the prophet. Then he warned, get out of Jerusalem. Here is now the unfolding of that image. This is also the warning given in Daniel 9, 27, that in the midst of this seven-year period, this prince that would come would cut off the offering and the sacrifice and would set up an abomination that makes desolate. Here it is in the middle of this tribulation. They make an image to the beast which had the wound by the sword and did live. And he had power to give life unto the image of the beast, against spirit or pneuma, interesting, unto the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak and cause that as many as would not worship the beast, or the image of the beast, sorry, should be killed. Now, it's been a long time since we're in the letters to the seven churches. How many remember those letters to the seven churches? And how many remember it's a whole different world when we were going through the letters to the seven churches? You know, you could go into stores without masks and come and go as you please and you weren't quarantined or whatever the case may be. But if you remember, one of the challenges the churches faced in that Roman Empire was Caesar worship. I mean, you remember that? And they were told they had to take a pinch of incense and they had to offer to the image of Caesar. And it started in different parts of the empire and eventually around the 200s, I believe, became throughout the empire. But you had to say Caesar is Lord. And many of the Christians refused to do that and were thrown into the arena and died in the gladiator fights and other things because they would not say Caesar is Lord. I find it interesting that as we get to this image of the beast and we come now to those two legs of Nebuchadnezzar's dream statue, the two legs of iron, interesting enough, when these ten toes emerge, these iron and these clay toes, one of the things that happens again is the forced worship of an image. And if you will not worship that image, you are put to death. It's like Caesar worshiped has returned, which was a hallmark of that fourth beast, the Roman Empire. Interesting how this returns. So as many as would not worship the image of the beast, that they should be killed. When we go to Israel, and I hope we get to go again, it's great to take people to different sites because they've read in their Bibles, and Edo, our guide, will say, we're gonna take the black and white from the pages, the one dimension in a sense, and we're gonna make it three dimensions, length, height, width, color, sight, smell, sounds, touch. You're gonna see the land, you're gonna hear the land, you're gonna touch it, you're gonna smell the land, and your Bible is gonna go from black and white to, to 3D in color and suddenly come alive to you. And so you'll bring people into the synagogue at Capernaum, and it sits on the original volcanic lava rock of the base that was used in Jesus' time, and then of course, hundreds of years after, they would improve it with better limestone above, but you're still on the same footprint of the same building where he said to the man with a withered hand, stretch out your hand. You're in that synagogue. 
And you'll watch people take it in and that the structure is the same and that the layout is very much the same of Jesus's day. And, and you can see they're, they're like, wow, I've read about it and now I'm actually here and I'm looking at the Sea of Galilee. And you can see how when they wanted to kill Jesus, he just walked right out and got in a boat. It's very clear once you're there, That's, it's a quick walk. It's like from here to the mailbox. And he leaves. So when we take them there, they watch their Bible begin to come alive in front of their eyes. I'd like to challenge you that the things that are happening right now in the technological world and in the social world and even in governmental things are much again like your Bible coming alive before your eyes. 3D is again happening, but this time, instead of looking historically, we're now looking future and present, and we're seeing things that were told to us here in the Bible that for thousands of years they would sit there saying, how in the world is this going to happen? And now we're watching these things potentially being deployed as we speak. What do you mean? Verse 16. He causes all, both small and great, so your status is irrelevant, rich and poor, so apparently the elite and the globalists may be in for surprise, free and slave or bond, and there is still slavery around the world, to receive a mark in the right hand or in their foreheads, and we'll look at that a little more fully in a bit, that no man might buy or sell save that he had the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. So I want to show you a few slides. Let's start with that gentleman, if I may. So we can click us over. Show you a few slides. Got a few things to read to you today. Hopefully. Well, you can't see that's black screen. So here are some articles that have come out in the last oh, year that have caught my attention. This one's called When It's Not a Game, When It's Real Life, China's Social Credit System by Tyler Durden of ZeroHedge.com, October 13th, 2019. He notes for us, in an attempt to imbue trust, China has announced a plan to implement a national tracking or ranking system for its citizens and companies. Currently in pilot mode, the new system will be rolled out in, what year? 2020. And now maybe delayed with COVID. And will go through numerous iterations before becoming official. While the system may be a useful tool for China to manage its growing 1.4 billion population, visual capitalist Katie Jones notes that it has triggered global concerns around the ethics of big data and whether the system is a breach of fundamental human rights. Today's infographic looks at how China's proposed social credit system could work and what the implications might be. And so their graphic they made is called the game of life. We'll try to post this out on the website with the teaching so you can see it close up at home. So the way it works is this. For those who are doing well, the way that they do well in their system here is, well, this is smaller than I thought. We're just going to hike it up. If we lose connection, let me know. Some of the things they can do, for example, is, oh, uh, can you guys read it there? We're going to read it down here. All right, we'll go from memory. Certain things they would do, for example, visiting parents, speaking well of the government, giving money, helping out in society, so to speak, being a good citizen, not jaywalking, etc. Things that that allows for them is fast tracking for permission or promotions. It allows them to get better access to credit. It allows their children better access to schools, and it gives them tax breaks as well as better travel arrangements. On the negative side, when you get in trouble, the right hand in the red, if you criticize the government, you don't visit your parents. Here, let me brighten my screen. That may actually brighten my eyes. Yeah, there we go. You don't visit your parents. You speak poorly about the government. You uh, jaywalk and other things. What can happen to you is you can be restricted from flights and trains. You can actually be ineligible for certain jobs. You can actually be restricted accesses to public services. You can even be shamed publicly. Other articles say they will have when someone calls you a warning from law enforcement or the PSB that you're a person that is not to be trusted and your ringtone is such that you're a person not to be trusted. These are things they're working with. And in the old days in China, they used to keep a paper file called the Dagan or the Dangan here. And it would have your photo and your school records and your employment records and any other things they knew, characteristics. And it used to be on paper. And what they've done is they've actually moved this now to essentially an electronic form. 
And rolling this out and developing it, which they began in earnest about almost 10 years ago, but have been very fast moving with it since 2018, they went to a number of major providers in China to deal with this. So the following have been involved with it. Tencent, if you're in the stock market, you've heard of them. Alibaba, Alipay, um, Peng Yuan Credit System, and also, what was the last one? Uh, WeChat was also part of it. What they have taken into this new digital record is facial recognition, body movement. They can tell who you are by how you walk from there because they have an extreme surveillance state. And then, of course, they also have the different things they put in from law enforcement and all that detailing information. So they've completed basically this big database of the people in their country, and they give you a scorecard. And out of the scorecard, it'll be easier to read here, in 2018, two years ago, People with a low score were prohibited from buying plane tickets almost 18 million times in 2018. You couldn't buy it. High-speed train tickets uh, were blocked for people 5.5 million times. If your score isn't good enough because you're not a good enough citizen, you can't ride a bullet train. You get to ride the train that takes 30 hours. 128 people were prohibited from leaving China due to unpaid taxes. Well, government has a right to do that kind of stuff. And there's a whole number of things that have happened. And then, of course, they're talking about corporations also coming under this system. This is currently being used in China as we speak. And meanwhile, China wants to bring their Belt and Road Initiative all the way through the West to the very coasts of England and Scotland. Wonder what else will come with them. Now, you might say, well, okay, Pastor Chris, that's great, but that's China, and I don't care to visit or don't ever plan to be there. Fine. May 26, 2020, another article coming from the BBC.com news technology section. Coronavirus, first Google slash Apple-based contact tracing app launched. What did they do? Well, here's a graphic. There are two different scenarios. Person A meets person B. Person A realizes they're infected with COVID. Their status gets updated. That then either goes to one of two systems, one a centralized where there are individuals who will look at it and then contact those within or whose phones have come in range of this person. The other would simply be just to take the keys collected from other phones around them. And if they found to be having COVID, they automatically send to those signature keys of those phones a warning that you've been around somebody who has been positive for COVID. So this is something they developed. Interestingly enough, this is already a spokesman, spokeswoman, my fault, told the BBC that Apple has already approved the software to appear in its app store, but the developers were still waiting for permission to play, put it out on Google Play Marketplace. This was May, tracking people in Europe. So what's the world coming to? I want to show you a video, and this is out there, and this is not the only game in town, but I want to show you what is being developed and even already beginning to be deployed and see, again, if it matches at all, some of the things that you've been looking for in your Bible to tell you that you might be in the last days. The world owns over $275 trillion in assets. 1% of the world's richest own 50% of the world's wealth. Every year, $155 trillion is spent in the developed world. Whilst 1.3 billion people live in extreme poverty, starving on less than $1.25 a day. 10% of the world's population relies on untreated surface water. 2.3 billion people still do not have basic sanitation facilities. Globally, 1 billion children experience some type of abuse each year. Endangered whales, tigers, elephants, rhinos and wildlife are poached on a daily basis. The number of critically endangered species has risen to 20 today. More than 29 million people are living in slavery, the greatest number in history. Introducing Sovereign Sky, the planet's first space-based blockchain. Powering a new free world currency which will provide and protect our children, save and preserve our wildlife and aim to eradicate global poverty by 2032. 
In November 2018, Sovereign Sky will start the launch and deployment of eight satellites into orbit, covering all of Africa, India, and all countries at the equator to help its mission to eradicate extreme global poverty. Sovereign Sky will consist of a network of 48 Wi-Fi enabled satellites, which will cover the entire planet with a private, globally encrypted Wi-Fi network. A global new digital currency built and deployed upon the Sovereign Sky satellite constellation in the juristically free arena of space. On the ground, Sovereign Sky will distribute portable modem antennas packaged with blockchain phones using its own Sovereign Sky and Stealth Grid mesh networking operating system pre-installed with the Ruon mobile application. This website, which is where this video came from, actually has a number of videos showing how they'll actually deploy the technology down to the field. They have routers that they've, uh, obviously here's where they do their launch initially. Here's where they have the routers in the top of the page. The routers then feed to these phones in local places like orphanages and other facilities. And the monies would be sent, instead of a layer of bureaucracy and nonprofits, it would be sent directly to these different entities who are caring for people who are in trouble. And they will then have this Ruan system of a digital currency that allows them to buy the things needed directly from those phones to take care of those who are in need under their care. This stuff has been, is being developed and is talked about being rolled out soon. And obviously the idea of launching satellites, you might say, well, okay, this is great, but you know, I'm, I'm sure they really haven't gotten it done. Well, this coming from June 14th, 2020, one month ago in three days, roughly. SpaceX launches 58 more Starlink satellites in ride-sharing mission. And again, there are a number of people pursuing this, but what the article tells us is the mission brings the total number of Starlink satellites in low Earth orbit to more than 500. While increasing the planet's Skysat fleet to 18, <clears throat> SpaceX's Starlink aims to eventually include tens of thousands of orbiting routers that'll blanket the Earth in broadband internet access, let me diverge here for a minute, which will make Revelation 11 possible for all nations to see two prophets dead in the streets of, the, of Jerusalem three and a half years into this tribulation. They already have these things launched out there. So blanket the earth and broadband internet access, access which the skies or wireless sky sets will help the planet labs develop imagery of the earth's surface. First stage booster had previously flown twice, both times the Dragon cargo resupply missions, the ISS. It's interesting something called Dragon is being used to throw this all around the world. So where we're headed is we're told no man can buy or sell save he has the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. This was in 90 AD from John, son of Zebedee. And what we're seeing is a global effort to put a system out there that will allow everyone around the world to be part of a global financial system. Now, I know what you're thinking. Well, okay, but social credit system and the Chinese watching everybody and putting this around the world, that's fine, but things are different here in the US. All right, let me read you another article. This one coming from Forbes magazine. How many have heard of it? Three of you. This one from July 13th, 2020. Mitra, M-I-T-R-E. Mitra Corp runs some of the U.S. government's most hush-hush science and tech labs. Cloak and Dagger R&D, or the Cloak and Dagger R&D shop, might just be the most important organization you have never heard of. Armed with 8,000 employees and an annual budget between $1 billion and $2 billion of taxpayers' money, Mitra Corp, a government-linked skunk works, has been making bleeding-edge breakthroughs for U.S. agencies for more than six decades. Among the government's wilder Mitra orders, a prototype tool that can hack into smartwatches, fitness trackers, and home thermometers for the purpose of homeland security. Software to collect human fingerprints from social media websites like Facebook, <clears throat> Instagram, and Twitter for the FBI in support of building what the FBI calls the biggest database of human anatomy and criminal history in the world. In the latest gig, it's helping centers for, for the centers, of, centers for Disease Control and Prevention, the CDC, which you've all heard of lately, and Homeland Security's ominously named counter, Countering Weapons of Mass Destruction Office craft sweeping plans for curtailing the COVID-19 pandemic. So they're working on following that. Meacher's history is full of 
un uncredited public service. As its promo material says, you may not know it, but Mitra touches your life most every day. Wanting to know the extent of Mitra's touch, Forbes launched an investigation, Forbes launched an investigation to pull Mitra's staggering range of work from the shadows. What we found is an elite institute that has proved a major boon to the US government, providing tools for surveillance of criminals, diseases, and immigrants illegally trying to enter the country. It's a long article. If you're interested, it'll be in the office. In the late 1950s, facing a threat of Soviet nuclear strike, the US Air Force called on MIT to help it create an air defense system. That became essentially this organization Mitra, so that's where they're based out of. They came out of NIT in the 50, MIT in the 50s. Further on in the article, it gives us some other interesting things. It said here, take a project to collect fingerprints from people's Facebook, Twitter, and other social media posts. Emails and details of a Mitra contract detained, obtained by Forbes outlined a $500,000 social media image fingerprinting project for the FBI, which started in 2015 five years ago. <clears throat> it was run by an FBI hacking unit in Quantico, the Operational Technology Division, and funded by a previously unreported research funding body called Triad. Chris Pajota, the recently retired chief, said that Triad was designed to fund innovative research from objective outside bodies and that image fingerprinting is as literal as it sounds, trying to capture biometric information from social media images. Think of gang members who put up photos of themselves online, doing whatever signs, making gang signs with their hands, explains Pajota. They're also giving us access to their fingerprint patterns. He adds, the FBI can take your fingerprint characteristics from those images and they can build fingerprint files or fingerprint characteristics for individuals we, that we do, or for whom that we don't have biographic information. So this has been going on since 2015 working on it. Another 2014 contract details Mitra's work assisting the FBI on facial recognition tools. You know, when you go through airports and mass transit and parking lots and intersections and all the cameras around you. And remember, what we have is nothing compared to China. They have multiple cameras on posts and streets facing all directions. Right now, we're, we're not as advanced on this, but we are using it. Facial recognition tools, right down to creating local watch lists by flagging subjects of interest. It's also helping the FBI build the next generation identification system, the NGI which is one of the biggest databases of criminal suspects, faces, fingerprints, and other identifying body parts on the planet. Further down, Mitra's high-tech snooping also extends to the fast-growing world of connected devices. Think smartwatches, speakers like Hey Alexa, TVs, and security cameras. And a $500,000 September 2017 contract, the DHS asked Mitra to create a system that could locate and hack into smartwatches, fitness tractors, home automation devices, or anything that could be classified as an Internet of Things, IoT system. Lastly, the power to hack into the smart IoT devices, again, those things I mentioned, could be hugely advantageous for federal agents, though the government wouldn't tell Forbes where or how it's been deployed. So not only is China watching aggressively after their citizenry, we find out that even here in the United States, there are active projects either being made or being developed or now deployed that are also watching out on you and me. You see, where we're headed is there's going to eventually be a system where smaller, great, richer, poor, freer bond have to receive a mark or you will not be able to buy or sell. 2,000 years ago, that seemed otherworldly. Now in our generation, perhaps some of the satellites are already in orbit to bring it to pass. What does that mean to us? Time's running out. With all that's been happening with COVID and the economic shutdown around the world as well as the US, there's been a number of opinions about this. Interestingly enough, one opinion that has come out from a hedge fund manager, his name is Raul Paul, and there's always opinions back and forth. What's going on back in April 7th, again, market had gone down, has returned to some level. 
He was greatly concerned about the world, the titles, the worlds, I won't mention the word, Ralph Paul pulls no punches in the latest interview, this from May, April 7, 2020. But in there, he's noting what's happening to the economies around us, and he's concerned that this is gonna cause the largest insolvency event in history if it doesn't turn around. And he talked about how that goes down if it does turn into an event like this. He said, this could be the biggest event of all of our lifetimes, it has now become, to come, become clear. Raw believes that we are still in the first phase, which is the panic which now again, things have corrected some and we gotta hope it'll recover. But he said it will most likely play out in three acts over several years if it keeps going down the idea. First, the panic, which is the liquidity phase. Then the hope, which is the correction phase. And finally, the insolvency, which is the brutal phase that changes everything, including the system itself. You see, when people look at Revelation 13, they say, well, right now the dollar is the reserve currency of the world. That's where the world goes to do business. Unless things happen in the US that suddenly the dollar isn't what it used to be and we get into trouble. So lastly, one more thing. It's an interesting article written October 25th, 2019. And it is an open letter to Mark Zuckerberg. And I wanna read it to you. <clears throat> Dear Mark Zuckerberg, CEO of Facebook, for those who don't know. Your company made big headlines when it announced it would be launching a cryptocurrency called the Libra in 2020. <clears throat> Not surprisingly, given the nature of the times, the project has been greeted with intense criticism and skepticism. Don't lose heart. In one sense, the idea of a company creating its own kind of money is an old one. The airline's frequent flyer miles are really a form of money that customers can earn and use to buy trips and various other things. Credit card companies, hotels, and numerous retailers have all sorts of loyalty programs in which people earn points that will let them buy all manner of goodies. But if you play your cards right with the Libra, you could be to money and finance what Henry Ford was to automobiles. Your new currency could take its place alongside the inventions of coins and paper money many centuries ago. It could replace the US dollar as the global currency. In one crucial area, you're already light years ahead of virtually all other cryptocurrencies. You realize the fundamental importance of a currency that's stable in value. Money measures value the way a scale measures weight or a clock measures time. Most cryptos whose values fluctuate violently from one moment to the next are great as speculative vehicles, but they're useless as real money. No one in his right mind would write a contract longer than 24 hours in Bitcoin. With cryptocurrencies, it's steak one day and dog food the next. But if you can invent a truly stable cryptocurrency that can actually be used for day-to-day -day transactions and for longer-term contracts and investment vehicles, you'll be a winner. Here are the crucial tips to turn the Libra into one of history's truly seminal creations. Make it good as gold. Backing your new money as you plan to do with a basket of currencies won't cut it. In today's monetary system, the values of currencies jump up and down so you won't get the stability you need. Countries that became global powerhouses, Holland, followed by Britain. Isaac Newton, as director of the Royal Mint, fixed the pound to gold at a ratio that held for more than two centuries. And then the US, thanks to Alexander Hamilton, all had their currencies linked to gold. For a variety of reasons, gold holds its intrinsic value better than anything else. It's like a measuring rod. It no more restricts the money supply than the 12 inches and a foot restricts the size of a building you might wish to construct. All it means is that the Libra will have what no other currency has today, a fixed value. And that fixture will gradually make it the most desirable medium of exchange around the globe. People hunger for trustworthy money. Your consultants, like most economists today, will be vociferously opposed to the yellow metal, burdened as they are by ignorance and countless myths and superstitions. This widely shared skepticism will actually be an advantage as it will keep away well-capitalized imitators. To get an accurate assessment of how a gold standard has worked before, read any book by historian slash economist Nathan Lewis. You might also look at a book that I co-authored, Money, or the documentary In Money We Trust that I recently helped produce for public television. The Libra will be an unbelievably potent tool for prosperity by encouraging long-term investing. Without putting capital to work productively, we stagnate. 
This is why you should ignore the political cries to hold off on moving the Libra forward. If every great breakthrough depended on getting political sign-offs, horses would still be our principal means of transportation. You want the Libra to achieve a critical mass of users as quickly as possible, as Uber and Lyft did with their riders, which will prevent politicians from deep-sixing your invention. Here's where it gets interesting. And by the way, you might consider changing the Libra's name. The Libra was a measure of weight from the Roman Empire. And we know where that ended up. <laughs> Listen to this. Don't be bashful. Call it the mark. Germany ditched its mark, which it had been using since it created it after World War II, for the Euro 20 years ago. So the name is up for grabs. A gold-backed mark would be a transformative move in the history of money. It would blow Bitcoin out of the water and would generate an enthusiastic like from billions of businesses and people now and forever. Sincerely, Steve Forbes, Forbes Magazine, CEO and chairman of Forbes Media. The world is looking for a stable cryptocurrency that all the world could use distribute it all around in people's hands, but if you turn it off, no one could buy or sell. What we're looking at in Revelation 13, 11 years ago was still R&D. What we're seeing now in Revelation 13 is perhaps just around the corner. If you don't know Christ as your savior, may I strongly encourage you to repent and receive him in your heart by faith, to turn from your sin and ask for his forgiveness. Because we have been warned a system is going to come that if you remember the 70s and how they tried to identify what does that mark look like, and you look at the different generations of the church, they had all these you know, ideas, and you, you look at them, and we might laugh now, but what we see now in our generation is they are actively working on the very thing that we were told would come in the last days. And remember, this gets rolled out ultimately by the Antichrist. So he could declare his peace agreement, and he has three and a half years to perfect this system, and he rolls it out with the setting up of his image, and that last three and a half years, at least, if not more, you must be part of this system or you will not have anything to eat. You could be denied travel. You could be denied places to live. You might even be fired. You have no idea how encompassing it is, but the social credit system of China is a hint. That's what's coming. For those of us who know the Lord, as we see this, this ought to encourage you that you know I wonder how much more time we have before the Lord's going to return. Uh, yes, you should still ask that girl to get engaged. Yes, you should still plan the marriage. Yes, you should still apply to college. Yes, you can consider moving to another company for a job. Yes, you may want to move. You go on living as though you've got 100 years. But church, may I humbly encourage you, you might find the Lord coming sooner than any of us thought which means you want to make sure you're walking in with him in a way that honors God. You're not compromised. You're not backslidden in nonsense. And there's a whole lot of it out there in this world. Jesus warned us when you see these things coming to pass, look up because your redemption is drawing near. This time is getting short. These things are almost in place. And we know the truth. The world is panicking around us. What if the U.S. slips into a major economic event to where suddenly the world loses confidence in the dollar? You want to talk about panic. But if you know the truth and you know God's got a plan through all this and he will make a way for his people, you can be a light in what will be in this country a very dark time. Well, go on. What about the rest of it? We're out of time. It'll be too hot outside to get through it. We'll pick it up next week. Let's stand. Let's pray. Father, we come before you and we see... It must have blown John's mind to watch people waving a hand or scanning a forehead and transacting business or traveling or being denied or being arrested. It must have blown his mind to see these things so otherworldly. And right now for us, under development in some ways deployed. May our hearts be stirred, Lord. May our eyes be on you. May we read your word, Lord, with purpose. May we spend time praying for our neighbors and our friends, the people around us who are in darkness, that you would give us an open door to share your love with them, to call them to repentance, to a knowledge of your son. 
Lord, I pray for your church that is compromised, be they pastors or parishioners. If they're in places with you, they ought not to be. Would you please pull them out of that, Lord, so you can use them again? And draw people to yourself. Your church needs a revival. Our country needs a revival. And Lord, you're the only one who can bring it. Lord, we pray a fresh work of your Holy Spirit would fall upon those who are looking for you and it would be contagious to the rest of the church and the world. Lord, give us one more great in-gathering, we pray. Stir our hearts in Jesus' name. Amen.